young and flourishing transforming Africa. Now, when God wanted to liberate the children of Israel, he asked Moses, what do you have? And Moses said, what I have is a rod. So God told him he would use that rod. Now, you, as our viewer this evening, what do you have in your hands? Someone had a book and 50,000 shillings as his, his rod for the liberation from poverty. I welcome you to Flourishing Hub this evening. And thank you so much for choosing Church of Uganda Family TV. Edwin Austin Mukalazi is my name. Young and Flourishing is Young uh, Flourishing Hub is brought to you by Young and Flourishing Foundation. Young and Flourishing uh, is a network that is centered around improving the mindset of young people by providing you with the right information. That is why every Monday at 9 we come here to share with you experiences, to share with you uh, practical measures that you can use, that you can embark on to better your life. Remember, a young and flourishing is built on four pillars. The first pillar is daring. It is important to always open up your mind to business opportunities because you never know those business opportunities will at one time be world-class business businesses and the second pillar is money and money we all want money and because we want money who doesn't want money among you sincerely speaking it's the reason i'm even smiling because we all want money it's the reason you woke up in the morning to work but if you do not have that financial discipline then soon you and your money will part like the bible says in the book of proverbs and the third pillar is mentorship that is why every monday we have a mentor here who speaks in your life because you need someone who has walked the journey you want to walk to speak in your life and the third pillar is strategy you all need uh, we all need to have plans because if you do not have a plan then you'll always be in other people's plans now today's uh, flourishing hub is centered around mentorship and daring so you don't need to have you don't need to miss with us is a person you might have seen you might have heard about or you, whose story you might have heard about now if you're hearing his story for the first time you shouldn't miss out because it is really an intriguing story I've listened to this story, but I feel I don't want to stop listening to it because it is mind-changing. And remember, we are intending to change your mindset. With us is the CEO of Pretty Events. He is the founder and CEO of Pretty Events. Now, Pretty Events um, is an events company that uh, hires from tents, chairs, public address system, stage, mobile toilets, name it, as long as it is uh, about events. Pretty Events has all this. And with us is the one, James Ngavidano. Join me as we welcome him. James, you're most welcome to Flourishing Hub this evening. Thank you, Adrian, and uh, good evening, our viewers. Good evening, everybody that is viewing into our family TV. Thank you for having me today. And uh, I would like to thank uh, the management for inviting me and uh, also to share with you my story, which is uh, very lengthy, but I will try to shorten it. Uh, I'm James Singavrano. I am the CEO and founder of Pretty Events. Uh, I studied chemistry at university and I left the chemistry uh, university in 2002 and uh, my journey started in 2003 when James, I... Uh, as, uh, you, you're taking us very fast mm. because we really want to understand how does someone who studies chemistry why do you even study chemistry what were your ambitions but before we go that how is Pretty Events? Pretty Events is great we mm. are serving our clientele our mm. customers who have supported us for the last uh, I can say 14 years. Wow. We are making uh, 15 years this August, and uh, we are going to celebrate uh, 15 years in our own premises after join, uh, walking the journey from uh, one room, mm. 
mm. two rooms, five, five rooms. Now, after 15 years, we're going to celebrate it in our own premises. The journey which has not been very easy, but with good, uh, big belief, uh, God has guided us. Uh, our have had mentors along the way, they have guided us. Uh, we have had a supportive family which has guided us. We have had uh, customers who have really supported us in different ways by giving us knowledge, by giving us uh, resources. And we are very appreciative that uh, the, the, the business which started as a, an idea mm. now can serve as many, uh, about 30, 40 families every weekend. Wow, wow, uh, wow. Yes. And I believe we are talking uh, with a person who has this experience mm. and someone out there is really excited to know how did these uh, 14 years become uh, a worthy celebrating period to where you are now because if by August you'll be 15 years old as uh, pretty events. Now you told us you studied chemistry at the university. Why did you choose? Because another thing uh, that we also need to elaborate here is now career choices. So why did you choose to do chemistry at the university? Uh, I think the, the main driving force why I did chemistry was uh, uh, I wanted to prove. Uh, I come from a very big family and uh, most of my family members were 12 children. Mm -hmm. Among the 12 children, only two of us are able, were able to study chemistry. I have uh, a doctor sister, and me, I'm the only one who studied uh, chemistry up to university. But when I was growing up, going through primary, joining secondary, they used to say uh, some of the subjects are very hard, they are very complicated, mm -hmm. you know, cannot manage them. So, uh, in a way, my mind was working and I wanted to prove. So uh, <laughs> when I started second, I wanted to see how hard is chemistry. And uh, because of curiosity, yeah. I think uh, I ended up liking proving out uh, that you can do anything you want. <laughs> I, I did it up to uh, senior six. Mm. I went to university, I mastered it. Still with curiosity with, uh, yeah, all no, this time no. round, you know, By then, an ambition. It was, uh, I, I had already liked it, so okay. I, it was, uh, to finish my degree mm. or my diploma mm. and uh, stop there. But along the way, when I finished degree, mm. uh, when I was not yet employed. How long did it take you to get employment? Uh, I first, my first job was, I got a job to work in a saloon. No, I mean between the time you get this job to work in a saloon, mm -hmm. someone who has his chemistry. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I believe it was... It if, was if it about six months okay because i left the university in uh, in uh, september we used to finish in september mm. then i started uh, september 202 mm. i started on the saloon around march uh of the next, the next year, year. that is 2203 mm. so that's why i got my first job but that job was very interesting because my brother who gave me that job in the saloon he was not paying me Hey. Yes. Is that a job then? Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I, I later came to learn that uh, hey. uh, if you, you want to be an entrepreneur, okay. the best lesson you can learn, mm. or if you want to aspire to be an entrepreneur, is mm. you have to work for free. You have to be willing to work for free. So in that, that is what I learned. Because after how, how is it important? How is it important? Because there is someone who is really... Uh, trying to add up and they're like with all the needs that someone has you have this and that and that how can you work for free to work for free because most young people mm. you find you have your parents they're still taking care of you mm. you're still not having rent to pay mm. but uh, there are so many opportunities around you you cannot even uh, aspire to go and volunteer for somebody because in entrepreneurship the first lesson is you learn mm. is not is to learn not to earn so when you start entrepreneurship, the first thing you learn uh, is to learn how, what is necessary in a particular space. Either you, you, the, you commit, whether you are going to learn how to handle people, how to handle customers, how to different uh, uh, businesses, phases they go through. They, they have different phases. They, some, peop, uh, some businesses have first phases whereby 
you, you can easily break even like in the first six months there are those which you have to wait for three years even ten years so where you have to build so all those uh, lessons you have to learn the money in that space and sometimes when you have support system like you have a family you are not paying rent mm. you also learn different skills like uh, how to communicate to people how to to keep things uh, tidy like in the saloon we had to come first clean the saloon arrange the equipment mm. then uh, wait for customers even t teaches you some uh, habits like how to be patient mm. because some businesses they don't run on every day you have to wait like businesses which run over the weekend they they are very busy so mm. to prepare for the weekend so if you don't prepare then they say failure to prepare is planning to fail so it was able to guide me because we started the saloon and in the first one year we had one barber and two bar and the hairdresser mm. but by the time we finished three years all the three years you were in your brother's saloon no mm. i was working I got a job after six months, mm. but I would come back every oh, time I was free. Okay. Because I, I remember I started my first business mm. in that saloon after six months after of mm -hmm. living. So six years, six months mm. in the saloon. Mm. Then uh, what uh, what pushes you out of the saloon? No, I, I got a job mm. I, because I had studied chemistry. Mm. Uh, I used that. Uh, I remember one of my uh, my sister telling me. The fact that you have accepted to come to this saloon mm. and work, your job will come and find you here. If it doesn't find you, you can learn even how to cut hair and start practicing, which is very rare with most people. Yeah. We are hostage of our own certificates. Mm. A certificate, for example, you can train as uh, a lawyer, mm. but the, if the available job is for you to go and teach, mm. go and teach, you never know somebody can find you in the teaching profession and is able to give you a job of, 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 of law and you're able to advance. So but for me, uh, starting from a saloon, it was an opportunity to, to learn. At the same time when I was there, I, I think my mind was working very fast. I was bored and one time uh, my brother came and found me when I was dozing on his table of the count of the saloon. So he tapped me on my shoulder and he gave me a book to read, which he had in his hands. Mm -hmm. My brother likes reading. He got a character of reading from uh, abroad. That's why he got his uh, oh. master's. So when he found me dozing on the table, he gave me a book, which I read. After reading that book, I got three lessons from that book. Mm -hmm. One was knowledge counts. Most people, uh, if you are a teacher, mm. doesn't stop you from going and read about accounting. Mm. Most of us, if you have a certificate in uh, accounting and cannot feed you, there is nobody who stops you from uh, going to learn something else. So we need to discover ourselves as hard as possible. Or if one route has failed, try to discover something else. Because uh, for me, after reading that book, I was able to see that you can choose to do anything your life interest is. Mm. It was not about chemistry, so I set uh, three goals when I read that book. One was to continue reading for knowledge, not for earning. Mm. And the, from reading, that's why I was able to, to discover my passion. From so many other books I read, one of them was able to give me the guide how money works. Most of us, we work. We study up to almost PhD, but we don't know that there are different types of money. So I was able to learn that we have different types of money. And different types of money, um, they have advantages and disadvantages. If we choose to uh, work for a certain type of money, it will lead it somewhere. Mm. If you work for, for example, and money, it is the money which you get from a job. The passive money, it is the money which you earn where you are not. The paper money which you can get when you buy shares, treasury bills, bond. So you can earn that money where you are not even. Mm. You can have a job and start another stream of line of income even when you are having a job. Mm. So when I, I left the saloon and I got a job, previously I had started a, a project for my parents. I built a, built a house for my parents. 
even yeah. when I was a student. Okay. How? Most people, they stop at uh, uh, doing anything mm. because they don't have money in their pocket. Yes. But if you ha there, there is somebody who told me, uh, one of my mentors told me that the empty pockets have never stopped anybody from doing anything mm. except empty minds. Mm. If you have the idea and you believe in your idea, soon or later you are going to get somebody who has the money and invest in you. But if your mind is empty, then you rarely find even somebody, even to identify somebody who can help you to give the money to you so that you can improve on your idea. Mm. So I had, in senior six vacation, I started the building house project for my parents. So when I was running that project, it is the same time when I had uh, uh, finished uh, reading that book mm. and I had gotten a job. So the idea how I built a house for my parents was uh, everybody in our family, we are 12 children. Mm. I suggested to them they open a bank account in one bank and we would put 50,000 at the end of the month. Everybody was employed. They would contribute 50,000 and that is the money which I used to build the house for my parents. Mm. Now, when I got, uh, I, I got a, a, a job yeah. I, and I left the saloon, I continued the same principle by saving 50,000. So 50,000 is the money which I started saving mm. Mm. after reading that book. And three months down the road, I was able to generate 150,000. Mm. Now, when I was at the saloon, ladies used to send me to buy airtime for them. Mm. So we are in the building where it was on the third floor. The saloon. The saloon, yeah, it was mm. on the third floor. So they would move from the third floor, move at the basement, buy airtime for them, and uh, take it to them. So uh, now, when I left the With saloon, with a tip or free, no, it, it was free of charge. It was free of charge because I was seated on the counter, I was doing nothing. Okay. So I would do it as uh, 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 customers coming to our saloon. Okay. So after getting a job and leaving the saloon, mm. uh, six, uh, I started. I continued, in fact, the process because I, my family members saving were saving the fifty thousand. So fifty thousand is the money which I used mm. to continue saving. Three months down the road. When I was at the job, I thought, I, I remember that ladies used to send me to buy airtime. airtime. So that's how I used the, the I, I got the idea. The lady who replaced me at the saloon, I came back, bought airtime of 150,000, mm. put it at the saloon, and started earning passive income. So there was no need for someone to send another to go down and buy for them. No, because now they're I realized, now buying your airtime. No, because now, since I was no longer at the saloon, mm. and the lady who replaced me as a cashier and the manager at the saloon, mm. now I realized she may not get that idea or they are going to be standing hard to go and buy the same airtime. So I used that opportunity. I bought airtime, put it at the saloon, so that the ladies, when they ask for airtime, the lady would get it for them, and I get a, a commission mm. by selling airtime from mm. the saloon. So that's how my first business of selling airtime started in 2003. And uh, I did it for about three years. I was working at the same time, getting selling airtime. Mm. And uh, in those three years, I was able to increase my saving from fifty thousand to, to I would get started fifty thousand more on from airtime business. So I increased my savings from uh, fifty to a hundred every month. Mm. By the time I finished three years, I was working and saving that had accumulated about one point eight million. Uh, that was in 2006, uh, another opportunity, I had continued reading my books. Uh, because of that book, I had made a decision to continue reading. Mm. And uh, from that uh, knowledge, in 2006, the 1.8 million I had saved, mm. I bought shares mm -hmm. in Stambic Bank. That mm -hmm. was, uh, I used 1.4 million out mm. of 1.8 that I had saved. Mm. I bought 20,000 shares. I was still working. I bought shares, they were there. By two zero, uh, end of 2008, mm. uh, my contract ended. But uh, before 2008, uh, I continued reading. In 2005, mm. I got an idea. I, read, I was reading a, mo a Monitor newspaper. Mm. That's where I got the, the Pretty Events idea. Pretty Events is a camp, uh, we give services to tents and chairs and what. So. 
how do you even come up with that name, Pretty? Because when you talk about Pretty, there is something else that runs in people's minds. So why did you choose among the names that you would uh, come up with, you choose Pretty? Pretty events uh, was very easy for me. In 2007, when I was starting implement on that idea, I'd gotten it in 2005 by reading a newspaper. This no, uh, uh, what we want to get here is mm. when you read this newspaper, mm. how, do, how does it help you to develop this idea? Was the newspaper talking about how to start this particular business? No, they had featured mm. somebody who does the same business. Mm -hmm. So how it started was uh, the owner, they were a couple, mm. the couple was staying in Uganda, uh, the wife was staying in Uganda and the husband was working in Nairobi. So, and the uh, the couple, the husband, when he used to come to Uganda to visit the family, he would come with five chairs on a bus. And those chairs were used by the family when they got visitors. They would be used at home to, to, for the visitors to sit. Mm. So whenever the visitors came and sat on those chairs, also when they had visitors, they would come and borrow those chairs from their friend. So when the, the wife of that gentleman uh, saw the, that the friend's house had a need for the chairs, he told the husband to continue bringing the chairs from Nairobi every time he comes to visit the family. Mm. Now this wife, housewife, they decided to ch started charging the, the, the friends mm. a fee for using these their, chairs these that the, chairs, husband the, chairs br the husband brings. So when I read the idea, I said, wow, I can do this. By then I was uh, working in Busia, I had been transferred from Kampala to Busia. Mm. So that's how I got the idea. I came back to Kampara. I did a simple research. I visited about three companies mm. and uh, I was able to be convinced that this idea can. <laughs> so from my savings, I mm. uh, remember my savings uh, had continued throughout my working life for five and a half years. Mm. So the little savings which I had, I started by also sending five chairs. Uh, because I was dealing with truck drivers, I was working with means of energy. Mm. So I was able to send two drivers who are very close to me. So uh, the, 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 whole is, uh, the whole essence of you sending chairs, was it because you also wanted to buy them from Kenya as the other person, or that was the, the, the cheaper? Because I was not in Kampara. Okay. Okay. I had no time to come back to Kampara and do an elaborate research. Okay. So I was stationed at the border. Yeah, I, I, sure. I, I was employed there. So, and I would interact a lot with the truck drivers. And by then, 207, they are like uh, one of the prominent companies now in Uganda is a nice house of plastic. It was not yet so prominent in making chairs, it was making other cups, basins and what. So by then the chairs were not very prominent, they, there was no so much in it. So, uh, and Kenya by then was very known for plastics. So I found it uh, prudent, in fact, only at the border, so many plastics by then used to come mm. from, the, from across the border. So uh, I used that opportunity to ask one of the two drivers if they could help me to buy uh, the chairs using my savings. They are out and I was able to send them. Uh, the first five chairs of which I sent, they were stolen, they didn't even reach in Kampara. <laughs> <laughs> it was my first test because when the truck driver went to sleep in the lodge, <laughs> he left them on the top of the truck. Ugandans never disappoint. <laughs> yes. so, uh, they didn't, I didn't see them, but he came and showed me the receipt mm. that he had bought the chairs, but they were stolen along the way. So I, that was my first test. So when young people, when you start a business or anything, there will be some challenges, mm. but don't give so up. So didn't this scare you and, uh, you know, even the medium of uh, transporting these chairs from Busia to, you, to Kampala? It scared me about a bit, but, uh, you know, one of the things has been my, 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 my on my... One of my dreams mm. is that uh, among the books I was reading, I've read so many books, and one of the, uh, of the books, it had a saying that uh, when you see successful people, mm. it is not that they have not met challenges or they have not uh, fallen, it is, but mm. when they, uh, they fall, the, the only option they have is to stand up. If they don't, they, then they have failed. So, and the, the, the other thing which says, uh, winners never quit. Mm. So that one was, it was, and losing in a business journey is part of the, the process. So okay. I see it as when you lose, pick the lesson. So I told him, the driver, I told him, mm. 
when next time when you are bringing the chairs, now pick, put them in the cabin and lock them inside so that they are not stored. And <laughs> yeah, you didn't want to go through the, <laughs> the other experiences. No, so, no. Uh, but uh, most importantly, we are discussing. Um, uh, James is sharing with us his experience, and I believe you are picking a leaf from his experience. Like the Bible says, we fall down and rise up. What matters is you rising up, not the falling. You will always follow, but when you follow, you have to rise up. When we come back shortly, we are going to now continue and know how did he rise up to be where he is as pretty events. You too can be a world-class businessman, a world-class businesswoman, only if you have the right mindset. Now, Young and Flourishing is intended to give you the right mindset as a young person so that you can thrive. And the only channel they do this is through <coughs> Flourishing Hub, which you are watching right now. Adrian Austin Mukalazi is my name, and with us is James Ngabirano, who is the founder and CEO of Pretty Events Limited. Pretty Events are like it is events, so they deal in all events equipment. And he's sharing with us how it all started with the five chairs that had been stolen. Maybe one who stole the chairs is even watching and he knows, yes, I'm the one who, <laughs> who took those chairs off the truck. So um, uh, we stopped at a point where you now resume. This didn't even limit you. No. Even when the five chairs were stolen, it didn't limit you. You only, uh, you only changed the, the channel. You only revised the means of transportation. Mm -hmm. So after the, those chairs were stolen and mm. uh, I was able to face that loss mm. and uh, I told the driver who was bringing them from across the borders to, to now when you ever go to sleep in the lodge mm. to remove them from the top and put them in the cabin and lock them. Mm. So I received my first chairs uh, in 2007 around September. And, uh, were you sending them every month? No, uh, whenever, you know, truck drivers usually takes a week mm -hmm. to come to Uganda and go back. So mm -hmm. every week I had two drivers, so I would send them each one to bring five. So uh, I would withdraw the money, give them, bring me five. So every week they would bring. So uh, And sometimes they would also get busy, they would not manage because when they are going to load the fuel at the other end, mm -hmm. sometimes they would be... They, they would be busy or they would go direct to the roading point so they lose the time to, to buy the chairs. Mm. So, but within the period of one year which I did that experience when I was still at the border, I was able to acquire 80 chairs mm. and that was from 2007 around September up to end of uh, 2008. Mm. Uh, I had acquired 80 chairs and by the end of 2008 my contract ended and uh, I had no job. I came back to the city and uh, now this is which uh, in the journey where most corporates uh, face a lot of challenges. Mm. You have worked for five years, you have worked for ten years and uh, you have nothing to show or you have, you have not saved anything. Mm. So when my contract ended abruptly, I had only saved eight chairs. That's what I could see in my savings. But on top of that, I had a lot of, I had acquired a lot of knowledge. I remember uh, one time I, I had sent one of my colleagues in Kampara to buy me a book. And when my, one of my bosses saw it, uh, it was about 50,000 to buy that book. And uh, of course our salaries was not uh, big enough. But when he, asked, when he saw the book, he asked me, you man, why are you buying books? And I told him, I'm reading books for knowledge. And uh, indeed, when the job ended, I came back to the city. When I was loaded in my, uh, with my head with knowledge and my 80 chairs. So when I reached Kampara, uh, I had to decide either to continue and look for another job 
or use my eight shares which I had saved in form of my capital and start the business and I make the later one. Uh, I told my family members that I'm not going to look for another job. I'm going to start with uh, these chairs and uh, I have started the company. You asked me earlier about pretty events. Mm, pretty. pretty events, uh, I read the book. If you try to research about my, my life, in 2007, I read so many books. One of the books I read was uh, uh, The Principles and the Power of Vision. It was written by the late Miles Monroe. It talks about how God created us. God created us and we are complete products. There is nothing that misses. So uh, they say God creates the end from the beginning. Mm. So in essence, there is nothing that misses within you, Adrian, uh, and me or anybody. God, whatever you want to use in this world, it is already prepared for you. It is up to you to discover it. If you don't discover it, you reach heaven or hell <laughs> and you are going to blame yourself. So uh, pretty events came in my mind because yeah. the pretty world God created, it is complete. There is nothing that misses. Wow. If it is a business idea, if there are uh, employees you are going to use, mm. if there are partners, for example, uh, in two, when I left, I, I started the business, mm. the first customer came from, uh, when I told my family members, one of my brothers, uh, he was at university by then, one of his colleagues were looking for was looking for, he had visitors at home and he wanted chairs and tables. By then I didn't have tables, I had to look and look, look for them. So, uh, most entrepreneurs, you don't use excuses. I had only chairs, but I was able to go and look for tables because that client which was brought to me by my brother mm. who wanted the chairs and tables, tables, I had to go and look for the tables somewhere else and serve her. When I served her, she was able to open up her network. Mm. That's where I now come to the, 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 there is a saying which says, your net worth is equal to your net, network. network. Because I realized that if my brother can bring me one person mm. and uh, she is able to open up her network to me, mm. I was able to get about more than five customers within a, a period of six months from her. Mm. Now, I continued, uh, getting more customers, that was uh, 209. Then one, one day I was uh, listening on radio. I had, uh, to be exact, was Capital FM. I had about Enterprise Uganda. Mm. I had to leave. You see, when you are an entrepreneur, one of the traits of an entrepreneur and successful entrepreneurs, you have to be hungry mm. for whatever. If you want something, you have to follow it and get it. So I was able to uh, go to Enterprise Uganda when I didn't know anybody there. And when I reached there, I was able to, uh, to ask them that I've started a new business. I don't have customers. I don't know how to handle customers. I don't know how to market. Mm -hmm. And I was able to guide me through training and mentorship. And uh, I remember after attending one of the, the training, I was able to locate uh, one of the, my offices, one of my offices where it is now, mm. uh, from that training was able to be guided uh, how to get a strategic press, how you can easily uh, harness the attention of the, your potential customers. Mm. So that's how I was able to get the office immediately after the training. And I remember when I, I got that office, I had to be evicted from my house because I failed to <laughs> pay rent. <laughs> the only money which I had okay. I had to pay rent for my office mm. and now after two months of not paying the house where I was sleeping, mm. my landlord came and uh, gave me an eviction letter. So I had to move from that place mm. and go and look for a cheaper uh, place which I can manage using my business finances which were still very meager by then. Mm. But within a period of uh, one year, I was able to attract customers and I was able to leverage and be able to stand on my own and uh, grow my business. And uh, uh, from that instance, <coughs> that's when I, I realized that when you want something, you are willing to lose something. Prioritizing, in other words. Exactly. So most young people, I, I see young people uh, doing things which could affect them. 
mm. in future. For example, uh, you find uh, somebody who has left university mm. has uh, uh, a phone mm. of one million, mm. and that one million can be a capital to start any business. You find somebody, he has a job, and he's doing uh, a changing hairstyle every month. <laughs> And you find that that hairstyle in the mm. period of five years is able to generate capital and enable him to live, uh, be self-employed, mm. even build an, an empire mm. using only the hair. So in business, you have to prioritize and you have to be disciplined. Mm. I remember when I was uh, in the process of reading, acquiring knowledge, mm. I was able to uh, design what would call because I studied chemistry, mm. I was able to design a formula mm. which I have followed up to now. Uh, if you are to do anything, you, you need to apply a lot of discipline. Mm. That is my formula DH P squared. D stands for discipline. Mm. H it calls for a lot of hard work. Most people think uh, when you leave employment and go into self employment uh, or business, you, you rest. In fact, it yeah. calls for you to work five times because you find that when I started, I was the, I was the boss, I was the cleaner, I was yeah. the casual worker, <laughs> I was the accountant, everything. So to play the role of all those people, you need to be uh, disciplined because sometimes you're called to work long hours, yeah. which most people are not willing. They are, they are very comfortable in their spaces. Yeah. So I was able to discipline myself, uh, hard work, calls for a lot of hard work. You need to be patient. Uh, it has taken me since 2003. Mm. Uh, uh, I've met uh, my brother Sabit in this mm. uh, business network international mm. who has given me opportunity to, to air out my story. Mm. So it calls uh, uh, Enterprise Uganda where I went, where I'm able to train me. So you have to keep following your dream. You have to dream. You have to persist. So it calls for a lot of persistence, perseverance, mm. and patience. So if you don't have all patience, uh, I, I always call my, my mentor. My mentor one time, he was telling me, uh, I, I used to ask me, how much salary do you give yourself? Uh, most people, when young people, when they start business, they want to live the same life when uh, they are still yes, employed, employed. Because you are, you are earning five million mm. or two million, you can afford to buy a coat. And when you start an uh, entrepreneurship journey, you have to put on one coat for three years before you can generate money. So you have to live a different lifestyle until you are able to stand on your own. So you have to change. So most uh, young people, you need to look for mentors. One of the, 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 the things which I learned a lot, mentorship. I remember when my mentor asked me, what salary are you giving yourself? I said, uh, in fact, I remember I lied him the first mm. time because I, I told him I'm giving myself 500,000, but my business by then could not afford 500,000. And so I was still having so many variables. So mm. I had to, I was still earning 350,000, which I was paying myself. Mm. And in that, I had also to interest my wife to go and look for a job mm. so that she can complement before the business uh, stand on, her, on, her, on its own. Mm. Then after five years, she was able to come back and join me and uh, because uh, in most successful businesses it is it needs a lot of effort family partnership so if your wife or your husband is not supportive then sometimes you find it so hard to to manage so in all this journey uh, the 15 years you're about to celebrate um, what are some of the outstanding challenges and how have you overcome them to register a success story to date that the business that started with only uh, five chairs at the start then to 80 chairs by the time you officially opened has now what we call a one-stop center for all events uh, uh, e e events equipment uh, from tents to chairs to PS uh, to mobile toilets to stage and name it any thing to do with events uh. There is uh, in the, uh, the one of the things I got uh, my my mentor, Sir Charles Ochich of Enterprise Uganda. Mm. One time we are in the training and he said, 
uh, he, he introduced to us a word called dwarf. Dwarf is mentality. Mm. Uh, the, there is, there is a, when you are in entrepreneurship, one of the things that really fails us usually is we are not, uh, not long-term focused. Mm. So I was from the initial stages. Businesses uh, usually face different stages. Mm. Uh, so you have to keep learning at every stage. So in the, one of the, uh, to, to be not dwarf, you have to aspire to benchmark with the, the best who are in the game. For example, if you start, you have to look for the best uh, event equipment company in the industry. And you are able to keep monitoring and learning from them what they are doing and what they are not doing. So that you, so continuous running is one of the ways I've managed to keep. Mm. Uh, another thing is uh, the stages of business is that for example, raising capital. Mostly and, uh, young people, the youth, they always give that excuse of not having capital to start or to keep running. You see, when you are two-year-old business, you are not be the same as five-year-old. Mm. There are stakeholders in your business when you are starting. And as you go along, they are supposed to be very close to you, like your bankers. Mm. I remember when I was going to the bank to get my first loan, uh, the, the bank manager took a risk on me because uh, I didn't have the, all the, the requirements that, that needed. But I was able to demonstrate to him uh, through my bank statement that I was going to pay by discipline, which I told you. Mm. Then uh, I remember the supplier, my suppliers, have been very close to my suppliers. Uh, the, I remember the first, uh, the, when I went to my suppliers, the people who sell me tents, uh, they, they were very doubtful that I was going to, to keep in business, but after spending like five years in business, so they are able to supply me, mm. even on credit, and I'm able to use the other discipline I told you, mm. financial discipline, and pay them. So you find that as you go along, some of the limitation you remove them. You, like, uh, you are very then the... The mentors, you prove to them. I remember one of my mentors went to the bank to sign for me as my galanta when I didn't have a broad relationship. But because of the commitment I had shown with, to him mm. that I was willing to pay the price uh, through the type assignments he would give me. Because, for example, one of the assignments he gave me was to write a business plan, mm. uh, which he guided me. And uh, most people, when I went to the bank the first time, they were unable to, not to give me a loan. But when I met him and he was able to guide me, it took me some time. And that time I was keenly following what he was telling me. I would go and report to him. And at the end, when I asked him that the bank was requiring a galanta to sign for me, he was willing to go and sign for me in the bank. And when I got the bank loan, I was able to pay it, finish it. When I finished it, I even wrote a thankful letter to the bank because you have to appreciate the people who have uh, guided you, who have mentored you mm. through, uh, because one of the things, uh, most entrepreneurs, you see, to reach there, there have to be so many people who have uh, guided you. Mm. And one of the uh, way you can pay them is to say thank you, and that is to recognize them, mm. like the Enterprise Uganda, like the customers, even the customers, my customers, mm. some of them, they come. Uh, one of the most interesting things, for the last 15 years, mm. we have never had any advertising. Mm. So to find the customers giving them a service and they are committed to go and re refer them to you, uh, to, to, to their friends. So that one, you cannot pay it any, uh, for any price. Mm. So uh, I thank them for most of the customers who have uh, given us even knowledge, who have given us feedback mm. that here you need to correct it. When we, we didn't have trucks, the truck drivers who were uh, transporting my things, because along the way we bought our own trucks, mm. but people who have helped us, the, the family of uh, the late Andrew, who, who was my first marketing manager when I was shy, because from the chemistry background, mm. I was not very frugal like now uh, <laughs> speaking in people. In so he was my first uh, uh, marketing manager. I remember when I, I met him, mm. 
he was able even is the first person who used to receive my chairs and keep them so when i, I came i picked those eight chairs uh to he uh and he picked them and started my business mm. i was shy i could not market so he would go and meet clients for on my own behalf until when i was able to pick myself and the uh, market okay mm. so uh, even as we wind up mm. what lessons do you leave to someone who has been watching us since we started up to now are uh, lessons that are drawn from your own experience that you would really want someone to reflect on even as they uh, even as they plan to start up businesses or even as they have a blunt mind for now when it comes to business first what i would tell them acquire knowledge when you have knowledge uh, as I told you, empty pockets have never stopped anybody from doing anything but mm. empty mind. Acquire knowledge. When you have knowledge, you always find solutions along the way. Mm. The second, use the network. I am here because of the network. I am in BNI, which I, I joined four years ago. And I've been able to get so many referrals, get advice from so many people whom I couldn't have. Uh, connected if I was alone so you need people you need networks uh, reliable networks which can make you a better person mm. thirdly dream big don't take no for a no make sure you have your dreams and if you quit for on your dreams you will also become somebody else but if you persist and keep on your dreams you also become somebody else so don't uh, uh, let uh, your, your dreams die with you. Take your dreams head on, fight on. You'll finally win and you'll be uh, appreciated for the jobs you have created, for the people you have helped. You have helped to be better people because I've, one of the things I've learned is that me as a person to have gone through this experience, I cannot keep it. I need to come and share with more people, the people who have helped me, so that they have the guts because in Uganda, we are the, the youngest population, mm. but we are the, the poorest. We are still uh, struggling with, uh, we are seeing young people going abroad, uh, so-called uh, uh, going to look for green pastures. Mm. And at the same time, people from abroad are coming here in Uganda, and within a few years, they are millionaires. So I think one of the things that we have as a country, as people, is that we need to change our mindset. Because the people who come here, within a short time, they are millionaires. And people for us, we are selling our lands, we are leaving our resources to go to there go and, there and, come and the become the same people. So the only thing which we need to change is our mindset. There is a lot of wealth here. There is a lot of opportunities here. There is a lot of uh, people who are willing to help us. The people who have uh, helped me, I, they didn't know first. But I had to go to them because I needed something. Mm -hmm. So let's change our mindset. The money issue, money is not everything. Mm -hmm. But if we are to help each other, money will come later. Mm -hmm. We need discipline. We, we have a very bad culture. You see, Uganda is the most corrupt country in almost in the whole of Africa. Mm -hmm. It's because we don't have mentors. We don't have good example for us. Mm -hmm. People who can show example that I started with this, now I am here. So people, uh, most of the people are in the, uh, uh, leaders in politics, they, they are not good example to most of us. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they, they spend without considering uh, the, the use, the what. So we need us, the youth, mm -hmm. to do work in ourselves so that we can be good example. Mm. Because if you can employ yourself, you not be a beggar to somebody. Yeah. Then at the end, people are going to come to you and learn something. Mm. If you can depend on yourself, then at the end, uh, you can also change one person or two. Indeed. Mm. And uh, I really want to thank you so much for 
accepting, first of all, to share with us your experience. I know someone out there had a pen like I did and maybe had a notebook, so they were noting down what they found important for them as per their vision. Now, before I will release you, kindly send out your greetings to those people who have been watching you. For oh, thank yesterday. you, Adrian. I mm -hmm. want to thank my family, uh, my wife, my children, uh, my friends in BNI, uh, my mentors who have helped me, uh, the people at Enterprise Uganda who have mentored me, have trained me, and uh, also my brother who introduced me to business through employing me mm. at his business and gave me that book which changed me and uh, all the viewers of uh, family television. Thank you so much. And I also send out my regards to all of you who have been watching and you who have uh, made it a, a habit I could call it a habit to watch Flourishing Hub every Monday. Thank you so much. Now, just in case you want to even follow up uh, the other episodes of Flourishing Hub that you miss, kindly go to our YouTube channel. And as you check out for Flourishing Hub, also subscribe and share uh, this video so that you don't learn alone. You know, when you learn with, with others, you reduce the burden. So, uh, thank you so much for choosing Flourishing Hub. Hub. Adrian Austin Mukalazi is my name. Now, we know that uh, on Friday last week, uh, we were deprived of the Secretary General of the Bible Society of Uganda, that is the late Simon Mukama Doctor. Uh, may his soul rest in peace. So he will be laid uh, tomorrow at his ancestral grounds in Bali. Now, we shall bring you a live. Um, broadcast of the funeral service so just keep it on church of uganda family tv you don't need to go to mbali to follow through the entire service and endeavor to wake up with us on good morning family tomorrow from 7 to 10 p.m as for now sign out god bless you we meet again next time